praise God today. Yeah. I've been um, running back and forth to the cabin trying to make sure that, uh, that we can have a copy of this. I know the pastor has been broadcasting on Facebook. And, and some of y'all ain't on Facebook. And your friends ain't. And so we want to make sure. I want to honor Pastor Myron with the First Lady Christian. Jackson, yeah. and thank you so much uh, for sharing. I also want to honor my, my little sister, uh, Reverend Tanisha Thomas. Yeah. And, uh, and she going to stand up there and I just call her name. All right, all right. Now she's going to walk in like she's the queen. <laughs> but we want to thank God. I had the privilege of meeting. I was doing a singles conference in Dallas, and she came down, and then we had, we grown uh, into a friendship because I, I run a ministry called Preaching Channel, uh, which stands for coaching, uh, coaching homiletics for a transformation. And um, when we were doing that every month, she came down uh, to Dallas to be with us. Would you pray with me for just a moment and I, I won't be before you long. Father, thank you so much for this moment. I am reminded that I cannot do this by myself. And so now I pray, Spirit of the living God, fall now fresh upon me. I ask now that you come again and rescue me from me and hide me behind your cross so that your people will hear you and see you in spite of anything that I may say or do. But then, God, if I am so arrogant and conceited, so full of myself that I know what you've said to say and I know what you've said to do, but I don't do it and I don't say it, God, would you please get the glory in a way. But to this end, I pray, take now my mind and think your thoughts. Take now my mouth and sweep up and launch in your words. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. I would that you do me a favor. I know we've been here for a long time, and I can assure you I'm going to go as quickly as I possibly can. But would you do me a favor, look at one neighbor and ask them a question. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Okay. How you living? How you living? Come on. How you living? Yeah. That was the wrong neighbor. I can tell the way they asked you. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Okay. How are you living? How are you living? I want to just talk to us for a few minutes and uh, try to help us uh, with this in this age. Um, I want to begin with a statement, and I want you to help me in these few minutes that I'm up here. Look at your neighbor, and, and yeah, we're going to do this all day, so just look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and, and say, neighbor, musicians, y'all look at each other, and just say, just say, 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 we don't live for today, we live for tomorrow. Tell them again, say, we don't live for today. We live, we live for, tomorrow. for tomorrow. Now look at me because this is important. I, I really didn't come to preach as much as to try to help us in this setting. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not live for today. You live for tomorrow. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. Everything that you do today is a seed that will either be for your fruitfulness tomorrow or for your lack of fruitfulness. Let me do it again because I want to make sure we heard it. Reverend Thomas, everything you do today is either going to be for your fruitfulness tomorrow or for your lack of fruit. Another way to say it is you're going to have a fruit and it's going to be either good or bad depending upon what you do today. Are y'all with me so far? We have to understand that this is a principle. This is a principle, but young man, it's a principle. Seed time and harvest time. Say it out loud. Say seed time. Seed time. Harvest time. Harvest time. Here's the bottom line. That God establishes. Look in your Bible real quick and flip real, real quickly if you can. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. I have the privilege that I've already written it down, so y'all got to turn quickly. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. God said this. As long as the earth exists, seed time and harvest, cold and hot, summer and autumn, day and night will not cease. Hear me when I say this. But the way God has established things, Pastor William, right. is that God has established it that there is seed time, say it out loud, seed time, seed time. And, harvest. and harvest. So say it again. So I don't live for today. I live for, I live for tomorrow. I live for because because what, I what I do today will determine my tomorrow. Are y'all here so far? That's what God says. Thank you, musician. But what God says is this. He says, you have to understand, we have to understand that what we do today 
is going to determine our tomorrow. Watch this. Here, here it is. Another passage of scripture. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. You can just write it down and flip that real quickly. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Watch what it says in the common English Bible. It says, make no mistake. God is not mocked. A person will harvest what they plant. Hear, hear the word of God. Make no mistake. God is not mocked. A person will harvest what you plant. Let me say it again. It's important that they make no mistake about it. Whatever you plant is what you're gonna get. I uh, I heard. I think Reverend Thomas said this. I think I think he I think he said this. Um, I, I I remember though being a a a country boy. I, I grew up in Arkansas. I don't get much more country than where I grew up. Uh, it's got a little more citified. Um, and let me be honest with you, um, I, it was hard on me going to seminary because, uh, to be real honest with you, I don't always speak the best English. Come on, come on. Um, I say stuff like Fenta and Fixin' to it, you know. You know I know y'all can't relate to that. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but I remember being a country boy. My granddaddy literally grew everything. I'm not about he grew watermelons and peaches and pomegranates and y'all can't relate to none of that stuff. He grew greens in the backyard and all that kind of stuff. Y'all, y'all ain't country. Y'all thought y'all was. And, and and I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, I remember though. I remember that, that I never saw a time where he planted a, a peach uh, seed and got an apple from it. It does not work. You, you cannot. You cannot plant that. You can't plant anything that look like an orange and then expect to get a peach from it. Here's what, here's what your Bible says. Make no mistake about it. God is not part. A person will harvest whatever they plant. Here, say it again out loud. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you don't live for today. You live for tomorrow. Because what you plant today is what you're going to get tomorrow. Okay, so now, so now, Bob, so this is what I want to do. There are two things that you and I have to have if we're going to have a successful tomorrow. Remember, we don't live for today. What do we live for? Tomorrow. What do we live for? Tomorrow. So now here it is, here it is, here it is. And I'm going to give it to you and then I'm going to sit down. This is it. Young man, hear me. Say this out loud. Say the first thing, the first thing I got to have, have is vision. vision. Come on, y'all say it like it tastes good. Say, I got to have vision. Now, here it is. Get, get your Bible. Go to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Musician, I love you, but I really don't need you. God, God bless you. I really don't need you right now. We just, we just want to talk. That's all right. Because if you do that too much, I get excited. I'm Baptist. <laughs> I love you, but I really don't need you today. I'm just trying, <laughs> I'm trying to stay here. You don't know how hard it is when I hear it. You just don't know how hard it is. Uh, so Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. You got it? Amen. Listen to what your Bible says in the common English Bible. It says, when, when there is no vision, the people get out of control. But whoever obeys instruction is happy. I want you to hear what this just said. Where there is no vision, people get out of control. Uh, evangelist, you were talking about it. But this is what the essence of what you said. Where there is no vision, people get out of control. Literally meaning, where there is no idea, where there is no, no vision, where there is, let me put it this way. Uh, there was a sculptor, there was a sculptor that was commissioned, uh, Pastor Williams, uh, to do a sculpture of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. When he was commissioned to do the sculpture of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., all he was given was a big old marble slab. All right. He was given a big old marble slab, and when he was given that big old marble slab, he had to, he had the job of making sure that he created an image that looked like Martin Luther King Jr., and so he went to work. At the end of it, it was said that this man created an image of Martin Luther King Jr. that looked so much like Martin Luther King Jr. that it looked very lifelike. And they asked that sculptor, they said, how in the world did you create an image that looked like Martin Luther King so visibly like Martin Luther King Jr.? He said, all I had was a marble slab. He said, but I saw the image that I wanted to create, so what I did is I chipped away everything that didn't look like the image, and let the image come out. Oh, you missed it. Here's what I'm saying. Vision, watch this, is first of all, knowing who you are and who you are. Tell your neighbor that said, vision is knowing who you are and who you are. Listen, if you, this is what we're talking about living now. I'm telling you, young man, you gotta know who you are. You got, part of my problem in my life has been, I didn't know who I was. That's been, that was part of my problem. You got to know who you are. And you got to know who you are. You got to know I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, I'm not the knee. 
You got, you got to know it. You got to know it. Watch this. This wasn't in my notes, but since it came up, I let it come out. Understand this. Every time we got ready to leave the house, my daddy would do the same thing, young lady. Every time, every time we get ready to leave the house, my daddy would look at me. He said, boy, what's your name? And I would tell him my name. He said, do you understand that your last name means something? And because your last name means something, you have to walk in according to who you are. What's this? Psalm 139, verse 14. I'm cutting out some of my notes because I'm going to sit down. Psalm 139, verse 14. Watch what the Bible says. He said, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your words that I know very well. Y'all miss what he said. Watch it. I'm going to give it to you again, young lady. Watch what he said. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh -huh. uh, with your dark skin, fearfully. Yes, sir. And wonderfully made with your white skin, fearfully yeah. and wonderfully made. I ain't gotta change my eyes, I ain't gotta change my hair, I don't have to change anything. If I'm skinny, I'm good. If I'm big, I'm good. If I'm tall, I'm good. If I'm short, I'm good. Y'all ain't hear me what I'm saying. You have to understand who you are. Did y'all did y'all hear what I said? Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, vision means I know who I am, and I know. Who I belong to. Now, can I push it? Push it okay, thank y'all for letting me push it. Uh, not only does vision mean I got to know who I am, but, but vision got to confirm where I'm going. Come on, come on, tell somebody. Say, you got to know where you're going. You got to know where you're going. Tell them again. Say, you got to know where you're going. Watch, watch, watch. watch. It, it's really simple. It's really simple. Vision says, this is the image that I, that I am. This is what I am. This is who I am. But here's the problem. What I see is today, to, for tomorrow, is not necessarily what I am today. Come on, come on. Yes. A anybody? Amen. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. That, that when you look at your life, you see what the, okay, my, okay, my, my, you just talking about it. You, you said you're a widow, God bless you. And you said you saw the man, you know the man. You, you know, but hold on, he, you, he's in the future. He, he ain't yet your husband. Right? And there has to be, watch this, there has to be a goal. Somebody say goal. Oh, yeah. You got to have a goal. You got to have a goal. Now, man, I'm just talking to you and her because y'all look like y'all young. Y'all maybe only y'all look like it. Y'all look like y'all young. You, you look like you about, what, 15, 16? Yeah, I'm right. I'm, saying, I'm in there somewhere. You look, if you don't look like you're 20, is you 20 yet? You is? Girl, you, I need you to age. Get a drink or something. Right but, but here's what I'm saying. Y'all look like you're young, so I'm talking to y'all. I'm saying this to you. You got to have a goal. You got to know where you are going. Here's the truth. If you don't know where you are going, then any path will take you there. Y'all miss, you miss your Bible. Your Bible said where there is no vision, the people don't lose control. Because you don't know where you're going, then you can take any path. I was on my way here this morning. This wasn't my message. It just since it came up, I let it come out. I, I, I had no idea how to get to Malakoff. Let me be real honest with you. I ain't know where Malakoff was. When, when this girl told me I was coming to Malakoff, I said, Malakoff, who? <laughs> I'm going to be real honest with you, man. I'm just going to tell you the truth because I just believe in telling the truth. I thought Malakoff was on the other side of Fort Worth. If you want to know the truth, this is what I told my wife. I said, baby, I'm going on the upside for work because I ain't have a clue where I was coming to. Now, I don't know why they were so, I'm so stupid. I know she lives somewhere down around Athens. I don't know why I was thinking we would go away on my four work, but I ain't have no clue. So my wife woke up this morning because she's at a conference over there in Grand Prairie. She said, you want to ride together? And I looked at her and I said, well, we can't. Now, you should have saw that that's the look she had on her face right there. Because she had that look on her face like, wait a minute, just the other day, you told me that you were going on the other side of Fort Worth. Why we can't ride together? Because you got to go through Grand Prairie in order to get to Fort Worth. So why we can't ride together? I said, well, baby, here's the reason we can't ride together. Because I finally looked at the map. <laughs> Y'all ain't getting it. I finally looked at the map. And since I looked at the map, I now realize that if I go towards Fort Worth, I'm going the wrong way. I gotta go toward Kaufman and go that way. Now, what, 75 of y'all miss me what I'm saying? All I'm saying to you that if you have a vision, then vision determines the direction you can go and the direction you can't go. And the reason some of y'all that's old as I am ain't got where you need to be is because you went in the wrong direction. Somebody say it's a vision. Tells me where I'm going. But watch this. Can I, can I read your Bible? Can I read your Bible? Watch this. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. This is what it says. It says, if one of you wanted to build a tower, 
When you first sit down and calculate the cost to determine whether or not you have enough money to complete it, I read it too fast, so let me slow down. If any of you want to build a tower, that tells me what I want to do. That's vision. That's, that's what I want to do. But now watch this. If you're going to build a tower, you got to have a plan. Right. Right. I don't think I'm coming through. Am I coming through here? But, but if you're going to build a tower, if you're going to do something, you got to have a plan. You cannot break out to do something and just have hazard to do it. And one of the things that's killing us as Christians is saying, God, don't show me how to do it. No, get in your private time. Get your piece of paper. And write down and say, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Don't you ever get up and start talking about, I'm just going to let the Lord use me and talk about, I'm just going to do whatever the Lord tell me. No, 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 no. You got to have a plan. Because if you don't plan to succeed, then you plan to fail. Did y'all hear what I just said? You got to have a plan. Tell somebody, say, you got to have a plan. But I'm going to come on, Pastor. I know I'm doing pretty good, Pastor. Thomas. Listen, here's the bottom line. And if you ain't got no plan, to have that plan means I got to have a goal. Why? Uh, here it is. Watch this. Are y'all still in here? Here it is. So, so Thomas, here it is. If I'm going to go to that door, I, I am not capable. Now, listen, I call myself Superman sometimes. Some, sometimes. I, sometimes. I, I just think of my, I know. I know I ain't a five. Don't worry about it. I'm five for something. Uh, and, I, and I know sometimes. But sometimes, I, I like to, I tell my kids. Let me, let me show, you, show you what I mean. Says, sometimes I tell my kids, if I ain't worried about it, don't you worry about it. Because I can handle it. Don't you, don't you worry about it. I got it. But let me tell you something, I am limited. I, I know y'all can't believe that, but I am. Uh, and as much as I want to go toward that door, I cannot in one step just go from that this place to that door. And uh, come on, talk to me. Not in one step. In other words, Pastor Peter, if I'm going to get there, there's got to be steps along the way that get me to where I'm going. Watch this. Those steps are goals. Are y'all hearing me? Which means if you were, okay, since, since musicians, since y'all since y'all were so kind to play along with me while I was gone. Now you play pretty good, but I'm gonna guess how long you been playing? About two years, okay. Two years ago, could you play like that? No, you you show? You mean to tell me? So so wait a minute, now, now listen, I ain't exactly the best musician in the world, but here's what I do know. When I started learning how to play, the first thing that man told me is said I had he first he sat down with me, he said, You gotta learn where the key what the keys are. Right? That, that sound about right? Now, now maybe you was a magician and you just sat down and you just automatically did it. But the first thing he did, he taught me what middle C was. And then after he taught me what middle C was, then he taught me what a C chord was, you know. You know, you, you got me? And then after he did that, then he started teaching me. He said, now what you gotta do is you gotta learn some scales. Okay, you didn't learn it that way. He said, now you gotta learn, that's all right, that's all right. So, so they learned you the other way. They said, these are the chords, and this is what you go, this is the one, this is the three, this is the four, this is the five. And say, I know, I got you. And so what you gonna do now, but even at that, even if you didn't learn it the way the other folk learned it, you still didn't just sit down today, you had to learn it a little bit. That's it. See, y'all lost y'all. You gotta learn, let me learn, that's the vision requires that you get, that you set goals so that you can learn it a little bit at a time. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. If you set goals, then you don't get frustrated when you haven't already got where you want to be. Right, I'm about to sit down. I'm almost through. Here it is. If I want to get to the door, but I understand that this is a spot that's closer to the door than that spot, and this is a spot closer to the door than that spot, and this is a spot closer to the door than that spot, then I don't get frustrated when I haven't already got to the door. And some of y'all have given up on your life because you didn't know your spots. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Come on now. Okay, let me. Come on, come on, let's get it. Okay, that's about 15 minutes? That about, about 15? That about right? It's about 18. Okay, good. Give me, give me, 10, give me 12 more minutes. Here it is. Here it is. So you got to have vision. Somebody say it. Say vision. And you got to have your goals. And here's the last thing I'm going to tell you about this, and then I, if I got time, I'll get to this last thing. If not, y'all let me come back next year, and I'll come back and do it. Here's the bottom line, and you got to write it down. Say, write it down. Yeah. You got to write it down. You do not have a plan until you put it on paper. I already told you, you're not living for the day. You're living for when? Who I done put some of y'all to sleep. I did. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But here's the bottom line. You gotta have a plan. You're, you do not have a vision until you write it down. I ain't got time to mess with you like I want to, man. But if I had time, I'd ask you what you want to be. Because you about 15, 16, how old are you? Yo, you 14? I, mean, I told y'all, I'm sorry. 
I said, how old is you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I told y'all it was hard for me going to seminary because I just it just it just don't work out well. Um, I walked in I walked in that one day. This is the truth. I'm coming back to you. I was in there and the president, the dean, was all in the office and I was one of the few blacks who was in there at the seminary and they and they was they were standing there. They said, "What you getting ready to do?" I said, "I'm finna." Do. I don't know. That's just the way I talk. Are you 14? What grade are you in? You're a freshman. God bless you, man. My son's a freshman. I'm just curious, I'm curious, what, 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 what you gonna do? Because cause you're 14, in four years you're gonna be 18, and uh, you go, you going to college. What college you going to? Baylor? What's, what's your GPA right now? It's a trick question, it's a trick question. If you gave me a GPA, I was gonna talk about you real bad. Because you, if you're an incoming freshman, you ain't got no GPA yet. What kind of grades you making? A's and B's. Okay, all right. Okay, but what you gonna major in when you get to Baylor? You gonna major in engineering? What parts of engineering? Because that's broad. Robotics. Okay, that's broad too. What do you mean robotics? Come on, come on, come on, come on now. Because you know there's structural robotics, and then there's, then there's the molecular stuff where they actually, you know, go in there and determine how, come on, come on, let's talk about what, 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 what you talking about? What you talking about doing? You didn't know you were gonna be part of this mess, did you? Yeah, I know. I know. Come on, man, you waste time. I got 12 minutes. Hurry up. What you, what you gonna do? What's your other cousin? Yeah. Oh, you got another one? Okay, what's your other one? Yeah. Oh, you gonna be in the NFL. You, you, you look like Tony Romo with the, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Y'all ain't gonna never invite me back. Y'all two was good and I'm messing all the way up. Um, what's your position? What position you play? You play running back. Can you run? What's your forty time? Four seven. I could have beat you back in the day. I could have. I'm just telling you the truth, dude. I've been like a four five, four four. I mean, I could. You've been, been at that table. I've been looking at you laughing. Um. Okay. Cool. How do we work out? Now, I didn't ask you what you do. I said, how often? Uh, every, 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 huh? Every, every day. Every, okay, every week, every day. Now, which one is it? Every day. Every, every day? You got a schedule? Yeah. Okay, what's your schedule? I, I know this don't make no sense to y'all. Y'all like, man, move on. I ain't going to. What's your, what's your schedule? Huh? Mornings before school. And then? That's all you do? Do you want to know the truth? If you want to get to the NFL, you got to do more than that. Watch this. Watch this. When I'm telling you is now, now. If I were, if I were to tell you right now, hey man, go to your house and get your written plan for all the stuff that you don't told me. You got it. You got to have it. I'm not helping anybody at all. You got to have it. You know why? Because now, watch this. When I was on my way down here to Malakar. I went the wrong way with the GPS on. Uh -huh. I did. I'm sorry, sis, I did. Don't be sitting over there laughing at me. I did. And don't sit in there like y'all ain't never went the wrong way. I had the that dumb GPS on, and faster, I went the wrong way anyway. I was coming out 175, the dog on GPS said, do this and do this, and it looked, I swear to God, I swear to God, I mean, I swear to God, it looked to me like the dog on thing said, go this way, and go, but well, now, I'm gonna tell you what threw me up. I'm gonna tell you what threw me up. I'm gonna tell you what threw me up. Because it said go 175 west, but the sign on the street said 175 east, and I'm looking at the GPS saying, that's east. This say go west. Well, really, when you with this, it's 175 East, but you really start going with, but don't worry about it. So I fooled around, I fooled around, and look, watch this, and I went the wrong way. You got me? I went the wrong way, man, but watch this, but because I had a map. I knew all I had to do was turn around and get back on the road. And when I got back on the road, the map now took me to where, and I didn't get frustrated until I had a map. If you write it down, y'all, y'all, I promise you in the Bible. I promise y'all that, ooh, I wish I had time today. I, I promise y'all in the Bible, have back to chapter two. Have back to chapter two is in right division. Make it plain and on top. And the read, you will never make it to where you really gonna be until you write it down. Cause when you write it down, that's your covenant between you and God that said, I'm gonna be who you told me I can be. Okay, let me, let me 
just stop. I, uh, all right. All right. Uh, can I cover one more thing? How long I be here? 18 minutes, 19, 20? 24. 20, 24 minutes? Okay, I got six minutes. I got six minutes. Okay. All right, six minutes. Here it is. Here it is. This is it. This is it. What, the re all I got time today to talk about vision. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's your fault because you pushed me on that dog keyboard. Um, <laughs> here, here it is, though. Here it is. Vision, first of all, confirms who you are. Vision tells you where you're going. But why and how you going to get there gives you a map. But here's the last thing. That's all I got time today. Tanisha, I'm sorry I have to come back because I'm going to honor the time you told me. Here it is. The third thing is say, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Vision. Gives you courage when you're scared. You don't live for today. You live for tomorrow. And what will stop you from your tomorrow is you get scared today. Now, I was some grown folk in there would admit that you would have owned your own business right now. But you got scared yesterday. I wish some woman in here would be honest. The dude you with right now ain't the dude you would have been with. But you got, oh, oh come on, we fear because watch what happens, we get in the middle of stuff and we get scared. But when you have vision, vision becomes like the word of God, a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. And when you know where you're going, you understand that there are processes along the way that no matter what's going on, I shall not fear and I shall not stop. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. I'm done. Matthew chapter 26. I tell folks, you better shout quick because once I'm through, I'm through. Matthew chapter 26. Here it is. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 44. And I'm done. I'm done. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 44. Here's what it says. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, stay here while I go over there and pray. When he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, he began to feel sad and anxious. Stop. Look at me. Here's Jesus the Savior. Here's Jesus the Son of God. Here's Jesus who has been born of a virgin. And he gets in a place headed toward his destiny. And lo and behold, he gets scared. If Jesus got scared, then don't you sit here with your sanctimonious self and act like you don't ever get scared. Life will, oh, life will throw some stuff at you sometimes that will cause you to get scared. When you get a diagnosis from the doctor, don't sit here and give you all that faith talk. Cancer scares you. Sometimes when you got diabetes like I do, and you wake up in the morning, your blood sugar is 45, and you didn't even think you were going to get up, you get scared sometimes. And Jesus, I didn't mean to preach, but Jesus gets in the place headed toward his destiny. And the Bible says he gets scared. But watch what the Bible says, Reverend Thomas, that I'm done. The Bible says that he goes in, he falls on his face, and he prays. And when he prays, he says, Father, I'm sure y'all scared about that. He said, Father, if it's any other way that I don't have to go through this, let it, let it be. I just need to stop for a minute. I really don't mean to preach. But is there anybody in here that will be honest with me today that you've been in that place in your life that you said, God, if there's any other way that I don't have to go through this, can you find it another way? And the Bible said he did it three times. And then after three times, he said, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done now. I'm trying to figure out what in the world happened in here. And I'm done. Please don't do me. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm trying to figure out what in the world would cause Jesus to get so scared, but then bow his shoulders up and stick his chest out and say, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And it wasn't in Matthew that I found it. It was over in Philippians, but I'm not going to even turn there because I don't have time. In Philippians, it said, who for the, in Hebrews rather, it said, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. And endure the shame. You missed your Bible, so let me do it again. Yeah. Your Bible says that the reason he got scared but he kept on going is because it said, who for the joy that was set before him? Y'all must ain't been getting me today. Y'all ain't getting this at all. He said, who for the joy yeah. that was set before him? Y'all still ain't got it. Who for the joy that was set before him? He understood that beyond the cross of Calvary, there was a seat and glory that was written on him. And therefore, the crown Yeah. 
man, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you why are you playing football? I got to see it. I'm, you broke your arm playing football, but you was riding skateboard. Which, uh, you running? You tripped and fell? You, you clumsy? <laughs> I don't know why I feel a joke right up through here. I'm not gonna mess with you because I don't want you to like, leave me outside. You're bigger than me. But what I'm saying to you though is write it down. Because what happened is, watch this. Write it down. And when you write it down, I'm through. Because 30 minutes, right? Write it down. Here it is. When you get along the way, watch this. When you write it down, this might be my message, but when you write it down, here's what you do. You also write down potential obstacles that may come away. And so when you write it down, Okay, I might break my arm. And you must this. And when you write that down, vision said, now I write down how I'm going to overcome it. Yes, it is. Yes. Wow, I ain't yeah. Yeah. And if you write it down, then when you run into it, you're going to go, okay, I, I'm, I'm done. I'll sit down with this. Um, I, I'll sit down with this. Yeah, I'm done. I'll sit down. I'll sit down with this. Um, here, here it is. Um, I've been married now for 23 years uh, to a lovely young lady. Um, if you, if you, if my phone wasn't recording, I would take it and hold it up and show you. She's um, like all on the front of my phone. I, I love that girl. I, I told her it's, it's, you know, it's kind of sad to be, you know, 20 years married to somebody and uh, sitting up saying, we, I walked in the room the other night. I, I know you, you get a kick out of this. I walked in the room the other night. And uh, when I first met her, when I first met her, the song that she played for me was, if this world were mine. Okay, y'all talk something. <laughs> They so say, like, they ain't never heard Luther Vandross a day in their life. Like, I don't know why y'all sit there playing. I'm saying, I'm talking, that's some good stuff. I don't care. Now, I know y'all gonna play a to follow me when y'all go to y'all house, but that ain't what I'm playing. I'm gonna start like, suddenly, life wasn't easy me. Y'all don't even know them songs. All right. Okay, I'm sorry. I felt something in my belly right there. It's a. It's a. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. That ain't got nothing to rip, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And so, and so, and so I was telling her the other night, I said, I said, we, 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 we I tell her that literally the other night, I walked in the room and I thought the first song she, she played for me was If This World Were Mine. So we, she's sitting up there studying, she's working on a doctorate. So, and so I'm sitting up there and I walked in with my phone and I downloaded on Apple Music and, uh, and, and I just, I just cut it on real loud and put it on there and Luther come on to my, If This World Were Mine. And I and all of a sudden she said, Is that your phone? <laughs> and, uh, and, and watch this, watch this, man, watch this. I, I mean, I ain't got no game, but I just played the game I got. And so, I'm done. 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 i am done i am done i yeah, the, the, the house is not on you. I knew you knew it. I knew you knew it. And so the bottom line is, I played all that stuff. And she's like, what's wrong with you? I said, girl, I just love you. I said, I just love you. She said, you acting like a kid. You sure live right. I'm like a teenager in love all over again. And here's what's amazing. Here's what's amazing. Here's what's amazing, man. And so here we are 23 years later. But I want you to understand something. 23 years ago, remember I told you, you don't live for today, you live for tomorrow. You don't live for today, you live for tomorrow. And so let me tell you what I did. 23 years, 20, 23 years ago, we made a decision that divorce is not an option. We talk about it, that no matter what we go through a long way, and let me be honest with you, can I be honest with you? Y'all might lose respect for us. Stop trying to get personally in our business. We done been through everything that you can name. Okay, y'all didn't hear me. Yeah. We, we, we's done been through everything you can name. Sickness, been through it. Uh, uh, adultery, been through it. We done been through everything. Lying, been through it. We done been through everything. I'm sorry, I know your marriage is perfect, but we done been through everything we can name. And you trying to ask me, how is it that we stay together? So back to me that all time, Tanisha. How is it that y'all done stay together? Because of the joy that's set before you. And when you start the journey with a vision, then the stuff that happens.